Marshall. Yes, uh, it is rather dark in here. You see, we never turn on the lights. We don't need any. At Radio Mystery Theater, all we illuminate is your imagination. But do not be concerned. Although it has been said that when one is alone in the darkness, one hears strange things. These hallowed holes be cut. None shall look upon the sacred golden cauldron of the druid. A strange voice. A voice from the moldering past. What has a sacred golden cauldron and the strange cult of the ancient druids to do with our story? Even the mention of the word druid evokes a frightening display of pyrotechnics from the atmosphere. Why does contemporary man still fear prehistoric rituals from the past? I had, please, don't ask the old man any more questions. Look at his face. It's beginning to turn darker than the storm outside. Forgive me if my questions are in bad taste, sir. That my interest in crime is a hobby, as is my interest in the occult. They would not make light of the power of the druids, Mr. Spencer. It reaches out beyond the confines of this castle. Beyond Stonehenge. Beyond the grave. mystery drama, The Golden Cauldron, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ralph Goodman and stars Paul Hecht. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines, and Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. cauldron? The power of the druids reaching out beyond the grave? In this, the 20th century? Come with me to Albion Castle, a crumbling remnant of the past as it exists today. A storm rages outside, but safe for the moment are two American tourists who have come here for a skeptical look into the legend of the druids. In the great hall of the castle, above the fireplace, there is a graven image of a druid god. There is something hypnotic about this strange carved deity that is being examined by Brad Spencer, the young man who does not frighten easily. And yet, the statue is holding Brad in its spell. Well, Brad, I see you've met the lord of the castle. The likeness of the all-powerful Celtic god. Is that what he looked like, Peter? Well, I've never seen him, but when I guide the tour groups around Stonehenge, that's the face I describe. <laughs> Looks rather frightening, doesn't it? The tourists love it. It's a moody climate. Uh, let's, let's change the subject, Peter. <laughs> Maybe the weather will improve. <laughs> Don't tell me this druid nonsense is getting to you. <laughs> no, of course not. It might worry Dennis. You don't know how his childish mind functions. Come to think of it, I'm not too sure how it functions myself. <laughs> as long as he can earn enough money to avoid that brand new Rolls Royce you two arrived in, I'm sure you don't care. That's true. I'm a sponge. Soak up the wealth I find around me. Never work if I can help it. But Dennis is no worse than I am. He didn't earn his millions. He inherited them. I can't wait to meet him. How the tour is going? Jammed as usual this time of year. But I'm beginning to lose interest. Not in Stonehenge. Oh, no, no. That always fascinates me, just as this image of their Celtic god seems to fascinate you. You may be bored with your work, Peter, but I find this crumbling old castle an endless source of amusement. Amusement? Research, old buddy. You may be interested to know that I'm getting close to the solution of the ancient Albion mystery. Don't tell me you're still checking out that old legend. Legend, Peter? Or fact? You must have picked up a lot of information about the druids that could be of help in clearing up the strange legend about the tragic death of the archdruid Albion and his secret love, the beautiful Helen. I wouldn't discuss it here if I were you. Brad! Brad! 
Dennis, where are you? Uh, here, Dennis. Oh, thank heaven. I thought I was alone in this spooky place. Uh, what's going on out there? An atomic blast? Relax, Mr. Wentworth. Just one of our usual summer evening showers. Oh. Uh, you know my name? Uh, I mean, you had most of it, only you left out the third. The third? Yeah, you know, Dennis Wentworth, the third. Uh, <laughs> don't think Grandfather was happy with the first two. Yeah, that's why he left his fortune to Dennis. Well, it's not a fortune, but it's enough. Um, <laughs> I think I'll go back to my room. Now, wait. Uh, we're going to have some brandy. Look, I'll be out in a minute as soon as I change my shirt. Oh, uh, make mine a double. Uh, now to uh, get back to the legend. No need to get the fact secondhand. To that old car out there, the one that just pulled up in the driveway? Yeah. It belongs to Siculus. Who? Siculus. Siculus Lothbridge, one of the oldest residents of this area. Some believe he was once an arch druid himself. You don't say. Huh, I'd like to meet him. <laughs> you will. He haunts this castle. Haunts it? Nice old guy, but he's sort of fanatic. Knew the Albion clan personally, they say. He keeps coming up here in search of the lost cauldron. Lost cauldron? Yeah, the golden cauldron engraved with the head of a Celtic god. He believes it's buried with the skeletons of Albion and the witch Helen. Now I know I want to meet him. The housekeeper will make the introductions. We're very formal here. Basil, we have guests. Yes, Mrs. Margaret. Ah, Sicula, so good of you to give this young lady a lift in the end. Oh, yes. And all this downpour. You have no idea how I appreciate this. Oh, it has been my pleasure. Youth and beauty has always brightened the eyes of the ancient. Uh, you mean like the beautiful Helen affected those who looked upon her? Who is this stranger? Don't be angry, Siculus. He's a guest, a visitor from America. He meant no insult. None at all. Uh, Peter, oh, uh, Mr. Brooke here was just discussing an old druid legend, and I was... Oh, this is Mr. Brad Spencer. You, of course, know Peter. Yes. We have spoken on occasion. Mr. Spencer, this is Siculus Lockbridge, a respected elder of our community. Most happy to meet you. She to the young girl, Margaret. She is chilled to the marrow. Yes, Siculus. Basil, take the young lady's bag to the upper floor. Oh, just a moment, please. I don't mean to cause any trouble, but my letter specified a room off the Great Hall. We didn't receive any letter. Well, then, how did you know that I was arriving today? <laughs> Siculus foretold of a third visitor. A young woman, tall, slender, with blonde hair. Well, the man's amazing. All we have is a room on the upper floor. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, would you would you like my room, uh, Miss... Julie. Julie Chandler. Yes, I would, Mr. Spencer. Oh, then it's done. Uh, Basil, you may show the lady to my room and place my bags on the upper floor. You're sure, sir, that this is not an inconvenience? <laughs> Ordinarily, yes, but an unexpected third visitor, tall, slender, with long blonde hair. Who am I to tempt the wrath of fate? Thank you again, Mr. Spencer. Oh, Brad, please. Brad. I'll just hang on to this small bag, Basil. Uh, you may carry these others to Mr. Spencer's. Oh, uh, oh, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bump into you like this. Uh, uh, my name's Dennis. Mine is Julie. Uh, you dropped your purse, Julie. Uh, here it is. Thank you, Brad. Oh, I see you two are already acquainted. I, I was just coming out of my room. And uh, I was going into mine. It looks like you and I are going to be neighbors, Dennis. Mr. Spencer was nice enough to trade rooms with me. Oh, terrific. See you later, Jen. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful blonde in a room next to mine. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Things are looking up. Try looking in this direction, toward the fire. We have another visitor who's not so pretty. Oh, the old man? Yeah, just arrived with Miss Chandler. You're right, he isn't pretty. Wow, what a weird face. Must be over 100 years old. Make yourself at home, gentlemen. And you, Siculus, of course, are always welcome here. Oh, thank you, my lady. I'm merely the housekeeper here. Who is the soul of a lady, nonetheless. Basil will bring some brandy. If you'll excuse me, I have my work to attend to. Oh, certainly. If the fire burns low, please tend to it, Peter. It's the only source of heat here. I will, Margaret. Rather attractive for a housekeeper. She's been looking after this place since Sir Lawrence left. Introduce your friend to our visitor from the village, Brad. Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. Lothbridge, uh, this is Dennis Wentworth, the third. Uh, 
pleasure to meet you, Mr. Lockridge. What do you know of the Druids? Uh, uh, nothing, uh, nothing. Uh, 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 Peter was telling me all about this place. It, it, was, it was tragic about this poor girl, her lover. You mean Lady Elaine? Lady Elaine? The recent murder of Lady Elaine and the disappearance of her husband, Sir Lawrence. Uh, no, uh, we're referring to the tragic murder of Archdruid Albion and the beautiful witch, Helen. That happened hundreds of years ago. We speak of that no longer. Lady Elaine was murdered a few months ago. There were three murders in this castle? In this room. <laughs> I'm leaving. Oh, come off. Stop being so nervous. Now, I, I can't help it. Murders, thunderstorms, old castles. <laughs> they make me jumpy. A young woman was murdered here. Right where your young friend, Mr. Wentworth, is standing. Uh, uh, thanks a lot. The police have investigated, but until they find Sir Lawrence... I, I don't follow. Elaine's Peter. husband, Sir Lawrence, thought his lady was cheating on him. He confronted her. An argument followed. He became enraged and shot her, point blank, through the heart. Death was instantaneous. And the murderer, Sir Lawrence, is missing. Yes, he's still at large. He could be hiding somewhere around nearby in the caves or in the village. Uh... Brad, are you sure you don't want us to leave? Just when things are starting to get interesting. A poor girl has been foully murdered. Why do you find this interesting? Oh, I'm in sympathy with a girl. But the thought that the murderer is at large, possibly stalking this castle, his castle. This is our druid Albion castle. <laughs> yes, sir. As you say, sir. Sir Lawrence bought it for amusement. He is not from this land. He is a stranger to Stonehenge. The foreigner's presence here has defiled the sacred memory of Albion. I gather Sir Lawrence is not liked by the local townspeople. I only blame Sir Lawrence. I have never held malice toward the poor child he tempted, wed, and then foully murdered. She was innocent. She had no other lover. You seem sure of that. When Sir Lawrence was not here, she would often send for me. I would stop by to speak with her. That tragic morning, she sent word. She wrote, Come tonight. I have something to tell you about Sir Lawrence. It is most urgent. And you arrived too late. Yes. Then, then it was you who found the body. Why do you ask all these questions? I have already told everything I know to the police. I'm sorry if my questions disturb you, sir. It is you who disturbs me. We will speak of this matter no longer. Well, as you wish. Your reaction is understandable. But you do not seem to be a talkative man by nature. Why have you told us this much? The evil murderer has troubled my mind. As I told you, I know the girl's family. Her father was one of us. One of us? Uh, one of the town's people. I also know her mother. The child was most beautiful. Her angelic countenance was known to all who live on these hallowed grounds. Of course, you are referring to the hallowed grounds of the Druids. <laughs> you speak of it often. As though you are privy to personal knowledge of the Celtic cult. Their rites, their rituals. I understand they practiced human sacrifice. You know, let's not get into that, Brad, or this murder. It's I mean, really none of our business. We just came here for a little sightseeing, right? Right. Oh, uh, tell me, Mr. Lockwood, uh, you say this murder took place a, a few months ago and that you arrived the night when the... Uh... I must take my leave now. I would not be here at all if I had not come to bring the unexpected visitor, Chandler. Whom you somehow expected. Who is she, Mr. Lothbridge, this, this Julie Chandler? Has she been to Stonehenge before? Brad, please. Uh, Mr. Lothbridge is tired, Brad. He'd like to be on his way back to the village. And so would I. Uh, would you give me a lift down the mountain, Siculus? Oh, yes, yes, come. But we will speak of no murder. Yes, uh, good night, Mr. Lockwood. Uh, forgive me if my questions were in bad taste. My interest in crime is a hobby. 
as is my interest in the occult. I would not make light of the occult, Mr. Spencer. The power of the druid dates back to the Stone Age. It reaches out beyond this castle, beyond Stonehenge, beyond the grave. Well, Brad, looks like you made another friend. But we're going to need all the friends we can get. What are you talking about? Dennis, we're not leaving. Not until we check out this murder of Lady Elaine and the disappearance of her husband, the mysterious Sir Lawrence Cumberland. Well, what have we here? Three skeletons that haunt the infamous Albion Castle. Two from one century and one from this. Perhaps the inquisitive Brad Spencer will enlighten us as to the reason for this recent crime of violence. I, for one, hope he hurries before the trio of corpses turns into a quartet or a quintet or a... Well, one thing we know for sure. In a moment, we will be back with Act Two. It is a few moments later. Dennis is still staring at his friend Brad in disbelief. Despite the ominous threat of death, Brad has announced his intention of staying on at the Albion Castle to probe the recent murder of Lady Elaine. The impulsive decision has frightened Dennis. You can stay on and check out these weird people if you like, Brad, but not me. I'm, uh, I'm too rich to die. Well put. Shall we see if Dennis has nerve enough to walk out the door into the night, knowing that the murderer, Sir Lawrence, may be lurking somewhere out there? You're being childish about this, Dennis. You're okay, I'm being childish. I tell you, we're perfectly safe yeah, here. Yeah, 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 so far. What does that mean? Well, I mean, I have a funny feeling we've been lucky up till now, but if you keep asking questions, we're... Really... These weird people, as you call them, interest me. If you don't ask questions, how do you expect to find anything out? Well, that's what I'm afraid of, finding something out. Once we know something, we're really in trouble. This... What, what was that? Oh, relax. Let's just basil with our brandy. Well, where... Oh, oh, excuse me. Sorry, sorry, fat old man. I move softly around the old place. I do not wish to disturb people. Oh, that's not thoughtful of you, Battle. Oh, I see you've already poured our drinks. Yes, sir. Mistress Margaret is most particular about how I serve the guests. Yours, sir? No. Oh. And uh, one for you. I, uh, I do hope you'll find this to your liking. Thank you. Oh, uh, uh, tell me, Basil, um, what happened to the dog? The dog, sir? What dog? Oh, I noticed an empty enclosure near the driveway when we arrived yesterday. Uh, a dog run. The name Bruno engraved on a metal plate on the wire fence. Oh, the dog. I'd forgotten for a moment. Poor Bruno. It was Sir Lawrence's dog. Oh, what happened to poor Bruno? He died. A lot of poor things seem to die around here. How did Bruno die? We had to destroy him. After Sir Lawrence ran off, the animal howled all day long, refused food and drink, and acted strangely. What do you mean, acted strangely? Which would no longer enter the castle. He used to sleep there, by the fire. But after Sir Lawrence ran away, he could no longer sleep there. Oh, well, where did he sleep? Out there. In the courtyard. On Albion's grave. Strange behavior. Howling. Yeah. Became a nuisance. Mr. Offbridge prepared a potion of gentle poison. I fed it to Bruno. No, I thought you said it refused food and drink. Well, by then, it was too weak to resist. The poison was lethal. It just went off to sleep. Never woke up. If, uh, if you gentlemen need anything else, please please. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. But I warned you, Brad. You ask funny questions, they serve you funny brandy. Your imagination is running away with you, Dennis. There's nothing wrong with this brandy. If you're worried, I'll drink mine first. 
Yes, it's delicious. You sure it's okay? Fine. Go on, take a sip. It won't kill you. <laughs> Bad joke, Dennis. But <laughs> drink up, you. You look like you need a drink. I do. Okay, here goes. Mm. <laughs> sure needed that. This place gives me the creeps. Yes, well, I've noticed, particularly when I was asking old Siculus a few questions. There's only one person I'd like to ask a few questions of. No? Mm, Julie Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a look at that chassis? I'm dying to ask her three questions. Address, phone number, and if she's married or single. Have another brandy. Yeah, I think I will. The stuff is great. Better make it a double. Why? Here she comes. Yeah. She's slipped into something more comfortable. Uh, for her, not for me. <laughs> uh, uh, good evening, Miss Chandler. Hello. I must say, you, you look rather nice tonight. Thank you. So do you. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, allow me to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Dennis. Uh, Dennis Wentworth the Third. I know. We were introduced when I arrived. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> and your friend's name is... Uh... Oh, oh uh, that doesn't matter. He's he's a bore. A complete bore. Oh. Uh, may I pour you some brandy? Yes, thank you. Uh, it's okay. We just tasted it. I, I mean, <laughs> it's a fine brandy. <laughs> oh, uh... Brad, if uh, you'll excuse us, the young lady and I... Uh... Brad, that's it. Brad Spencer. Is there something wrong? Huh? No, just restless. Hmm. May I sit down? Oh, please, please. Oh, thank you. Uh, you were saying, Julie, uh, may I call you Julie? Certainly, Dennis. <laughs> About this being restless. Uh... Well, that's why I decided to travel. See new places. I've read about Stonehenge and heard about this old castle that's been turned into a sort of inn by Sir Lawrence. And I decided to come here while I was traveling abroad for, uh, <laughs> well, the novelty of it. Now, Julie, you know that's not true. Isn't it, Brad? No. You've been here before. You knew of the rooms off the Great Hall and the name Sir Lawrence isn't mentioned in the travel folder that suggests this uh, inn, as you call it. You haven't been traveling abroad, Miss Chandler. You live abroad. In Ireland. Dublin, as a matter of fact. Well, how... How would you know that, Brad? Miss Chandler dropped her purse when we were exchanging rooms. I, uh... I swiped her wallet. Oh, uh, here you are, Miss Chandler. And I thought you were honest. I had hoped you were, too. <laughs> it's seldom I meet a man who is interested in more than he sees. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me... Brad, what do you do for a living? Oh, live. Don't you work? At living, yes. How do you feel about me at this very minute? Fascinated. That's encouraging. I'm glad I took the extra time to put my face on just right. Oh, well, it's not the face I find fascinating. Not that it isn't a very pretty face. It's, it's what's behind that beautiful mask. What's going on inside that lovely head of yours? Ah, still the analytical male. Haven't you ever made a decision that was impulsive? Yes, once. I discovered it was a foolish one. Would you like to kiss me? Impulsively or analytically? Any way you choose. Wait a minute, you two just met. You're not going to... Yes, you are. <sighs> I found that exciting. I find this depressing. Did it do anything for you, Brad? I don't know. Let's try it again. All right. Oh, oh. Now, that's what I call a kiss. That was a shot, you fool. The window is shut. Yeah, it came from outside the castle. That's get to get down, both of you. Whoever that is, he's lurking outside. Sir Lawrence. Sir Lawrence. Lawrence. Perhaps, but how, how did you know about Sir Lawrence? Well, they told us when... They didn't we... tell her. Front door. Opening. Peter. Take the door. Is everyone all right? Well, I, I thought you left. They uh, did. Siculus had a strange premonition that he felt the presence of Sir Lawrence in the wooded area beyond the castle ground. So we returned. I could feel the evil nature of the man. Remain silent. The link between the living and the dead is still here, just outside this room. Mr. Spencer, Peter, what is happening? That, that noise I heard. Oh, that was a gunshot fired at a distance of... Oh, I would say a hundred yards or so from ground level. Ground level? Wow, but you would know that. Uh, simple. The uh, glass was shattered here at this point of entry, just a few feet from the floor. And the uh, bullet spent itself 
here above the fireplace, just over the head of the Druid God. Huh. That's took off one of his ears. Ah, sacrilege. May the heaven's might revolve and the evil be bound by chains to eternity. Oh, man. I mean, look, let's call a cop and get that guy. We have no telephone. This is an isolated area. The castle was renovated, but it has been impossible to string phone wires up the mountain so that we could have contact with the outside world. Oh, great. That means we're on our own sitting ducks for Sir Lawrence. If that was Sir Lawrence out there. What does that mean, Mr. Sherlock Holmes? Well, simply this. We aren't sure just who fired that shot as yet. Are we, Basil? I beg your pardon, sir. Now, where were you and Mistress Margaret when the shot was fired? I resent that implication, Mr. Spencer. Oh, I'm not implying anything, just sifting through the facts. In that case, I suppose I'm a suspect, too. Oh, I didn't say that, Peter. Well, I was out there with Siculus. If we continue along this line of reasoning, both Siculus and I could No, perhaps one of you, but... Uh, Mr. Lothbridge, uh, did you let Mr. Brooke out of the car before you reached the driveway? Yes. I felt a presence. I could sense someone, something was out there. Mr. Brooke asked to be let out so he could look around. And you two separated? Yes. And then you heard the shot? Yes. I see. Well, then you are right. It, it, it could have been that. Uh, no, I, I never said that, Kenneth. <laughs> Nor did I say it could have been Basil or Mistress Margaret. Mr. Spencer, we are not amused. I am intrigued. And innocent, of course. Can you prove it? I was standing right here next to you when the shot was fired. What about the gun you carry in your purse? You'll find it's not there anymore, Miss Chandler. What? You're right, it's missing. How did you know I had a gun in my purse? (laughs) If you recall, when we exchanged rooms, you dropped your purse, I picked it up. As I handed it back to you, I noticed it was rather heavy and felt a slight bulge, the outline of a snub-nosed thirty-eight revolver. You are observant. And, uh, this spent bullet, embedded here in the wood paneling above the fireplace, came from a thirty-eight. Quite possibly your gun, Julie Chandler. I must say I'm impressed, Mr. Spencer. Well, then, uh, that leaves just two of us who aren't suspects. You... You and me, Brad. <laughs> Unless you suspect me. Uh, no, Dennis, you're safe. Then you are saying that one of us may somehow be involved in this uh, incident. I'm sure the man is joking. I, for one, care not for a man's jokes. And I say to you again, beware ye who enter Albion's castle. Those of you who would mock this uneasy resting place will perish among these ancient stones. This is holy ground, coveted by the Celtic god. Agreed. Uh, but but in case the druid god forgets to covet this place, I suggest we send someone for the police. He's right. We should not wait another minute. All right, then it's settled. While the others remain here in guarded silence, one of us will leave immediately and inform the authorities. One of us. Yes, Peter. But who? <laughs> Interesting dilemma. Six souls trapped in the remains of a crumbling druid castle, held prisoner by their fears and suspicions of one another. Can Brad Spencer unravel this web of deceit? He and his reluctant traveling companion, Dennis, seem to have stumbled upon an unusual and terrifying vacation spot. They'll have an exciting story to tell when they get back home. If they get back home... I'll be back shortly with Act Three. The mysterious shot fired at Brad Spencer has aroused his instinctive suspicion of those around him. It seems Brad is, by nature, an inquisitive man. A man who asks questions. Perhaps too many questions. However, the shot that narrowly missed him and the spent bullet that embedded itself into the wall does not seem to disturb Brad. Let's find out why. Did I hear you right, Brad? A shot was just fired at us by a murderer, and and you say we're perfectly safe here. I didn't say perfectly, Dennis. If that shot was fired by Sir Lawrence, we are safe. 
that it was fired by someone in this room. I resent that accusation, Mr. Spencer. I have warned you all, but you would not listen. There is more than murder afoot in this castle. Until the golden cauldron is found and returned to the Celtic god of the Druids, none of us are safe here. Uh, Siculus, please. Mr. Spencer has a right to be uneasy. That shot was obviously meant for him. But it was fired by Sir Lawrence, Brad. I can vouch for these people. It had to be Sir Lawrence. Well, if you're right, there's no need to panic. I still don't see why. That shot wasn't fired to kill anyone. It was meant to scare us. And notice how flattened out the spent bullet is? Yeah. It was fired from close range, almost as close as the shot that killed Lady Elaine. Well, maybe Sir Lawrence missed. Yeah, not likely. The light in here was bright enough for an expert marksman like Sir Lawrence. How did you know Sir Lawrence was an expert marksman? Oh, this rifle cabinet and these marksmanship trophies belong to the master of the castle, do they not? Yes, they are his. I see. Then you were just trying to be amusing again when you accused us all. Oh, no, 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 Peter. Just testing the ground. Yeah, well, let's stop testing while we're standing up on the ground instead of lying in it six feet under. But somebody go for the police? Okay, you're right, Dennis. This is no longer a game. Why don't you get into your role? Peter, Spencer does not control our destinies. I will drive you back to the village. The townspeople must be told of Sir Lawrence's return. Are you coming, Peter? Yes, Siculus. Are you sure you'll all be all right? <laughs> we have Sir Lawrence's rifle. Good. We'll be back with Inspector Heath as soon as he If we have your permission, Mr. Spencer, Basil and I will secure all doors and windows from the inside. Come, Basil. Yes, Miss. You are an interesting man. I just love the way you put two and two together. Now, let's really put two and two together and see if we can come up with one. One suspect. The man who fired the shot. Then you believe it was a man and not me. <laughs> Julie, you were standing here right next to me when the bullet came crashing through that window. That's right. But you're confusing me. You did say the shot came from my gun. Or another thirty-eight. But let's take one thing at a time. Consider the dog. The dog? Bruno, Lawrence's dog. Basil said it howled all day long after Sir Lawrence disappeared. They had to destroy it. Basil poisoned it. I don't trust that, Basil. Yes, but why did it howl? It was Sir Lawrence's dog. Why didn't it run off, go searching for its master? Well, maybe they had it chained up. No, Dennis. Now, if you remember, Basil said it howled all day, and at night it slept out there in the courtyard on Albion's grave. Oh, how gruesome. Or how obvious. Obvious? Yeah. Uh, you remember that story about uh, Greyfriars, Bobby, Julie? Ah, I'm sure you do, Dennis. They made it into a Disney movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that about this dog whose master died. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, well, go on, Dennis. Oh, good Lord. What's the matter? Yeah, yeah, they, they buried his master, and, and the dog refused food or drink, howled all day, and at night slept on its master's grave. Eek. Exactly. You don't think well, that's that... been our problem up until now. We've been kept so busy, we haven't had time to think. Come on, Dennis. Uh, uh, where are we going? Out there in the courtyard to dig up Albion's grave. And what am I supposed to do while you boys are gone? Wait here. Are you all right, Julie? Oh, I am now. It's almost midnight. You've been gone a long time. Uh, what did you tell Basil and Margaret while we were gone? I didn't see Basil or Margaret. This place has been as quiet as a tomb. No, oh, don't mention that word. And then you found something out there at Albion's grave. Yeah, we grabbed some shovels from the garage. Yeah, and, wait, uh, wait, wait, Dennis. Uh, keep your voice down. We still don't know whom we can trust around here. And that includes Julie. Me? Well, you know all about this castle. You're familiar with the rooms, the grounds. And you've met Sir Lawrence, too, haven't you? Yes. Well, what did he look like? Uh, did he have a rather large mustache, uh, long sideburns, and a uh, prominent scar on his face? Yes. Have you seen a picture of him? No, we just saw him. Him? Yes. He's buried in Albion's grave. Oh, no. Yeah, we, we only had to turn over a few spadefuls of soft earth, and first his hand came through, oh. and, and then the arm, oh. and then his head. Yeah, it was a hurried job. I can't understand why they never moved him. You said they. Do you think there was more than one murderer? Well, there might have been. But Sir Lawrence was a rather large man. A 
With a dead weight, it would take two or even three. Three? I'm just guessing. Yeah, yes. uh, would, would you mind if we just said two? Basil and Margaret. Uh, uh, no motive. They have nothing to gain by killing Sir Lawrence or Lady Elaine. At least nothing we know of at the moment. No, whoever did it was desperate. Took a lot of nerve to bury Sir Lawrence in Albion's grave. They knew no one would dig it up. Not in this town. <laughs> Except two tourists like you and Dennis. Wait. What if Sir Lawrence didn't kill Lady Elaine? Well, it's ridiculous. Everyone said that... Uh... Everyone in this household. And the old man Siculus. But what if someone, uh, the murderer, used a trumped-up quarrel between Sir Lawrence and the Lady Elaine to murder her and make it look like he ran away? And this girl's not only beautiful, she's got brains. Then whoever it was might be watching us at this very minute. Yeah, we're back to Mistress Margaret. Perhaps. Think about it. She doesn't seem too unhappy about the death of the lady of the house. With Lady Elaine and Sir Lawrence both out of the way, this house can be run the way she wants it to be run. Yes, temporarily, perhaps. But eventually, she'd have to give it up. A new owner. She'd have no rights. Both she and Basil could be asked to leave. Isn't that so, Joe? Well, don't confuse me, please. I knew it this. Well, keep on thinking or we won't be old at it. No, no, no. There's something else going on here. Something we haven't thought of. You're right, Brad. May I fill in the empty pieces of the puzzle? Peter. How did you get in? Brad just bolted the front door from the inside. I let him in through the servants' quarters. Stay where you are, please, all of you. This is her gun I have in my hand. Then you were the one who took that shot at me. I'm afraid so. And you were right. I have no intention of hurting you and have none now. If you cooperate. Well, we'll cooperate. And you were the one who... There's no need for further deductions, Brad. You and Miss Chandler were getting so close to the answers, I don't mind telling you what happened here. Oh, well, please do. It's hard to believe a good friend of mine has turned into a murderer. We don't have to tell them anything, Peter. That's all right, Margaret. We'll be on our way in a minute. There'll be no witnesses. you you're not going to kill us, too. Now, quiet, Dennis. I would like to hear the answers to these questions that have been bothering me. I hate to die an ignorant man. It may come as a surprise to you to know that we didn't kill Lady Elaine. Sir Lawrence did. They'd been quarreling when Peter and I rushed in about his infidelities, not hers. He had just shot her. She died instantly. I struggled with him for the murder weapon. A thirty-eight like this one I'm holding. And he, uh... He died in the struggle. Margaret helped me bury him. Siculus and Basil were in the village that night. They knew nothing of what went on here. I believe you. Well, I'm sure you do, Brad. But you don't, Dennis. Nor do you, Miss Chandler. And a jury won't. But if Brad you're you... wasting your breath, Miss Chandler, Peter and I have talked this over. We've decided to trust no one except each other. You and Margaret? It's been that way for some time. Sir Lawrence is dead, and I can't be here when the police arrive tomorrow. There'll be too many questions to answer. What have you done with Siculus and Basil? We left them tied up in the wine cellar. After we leave, you can release them. All right, let's have the keys to your car, Dennis. The keys? To my brand new Rolls? Siculus' car broke down as we reached the driveway. It can't be driven any further. Yeah, but if you take my car, how do we get out of here? That's the idea. Give them the keys, Dennis. Okay, if you say so. Here, it, but drive carefully. I love that car. Let's get out of here, Margaret. It'll soon be daylight. I'll be happy to be rid of this awful place. Quick, Julie, huh? bolt that door from the inside. And Dennis, yeah. run to the servants' quarters and bolt that door shut again, too. Right, right. Uh, good thinking, Pat. And yeah, while you're there, Dennis, release Siculus and Basil from the wine cellar castle is secured, Master. But why all the precautions? And why do you have that I've got them where I want them look on your face? Just come to the window and listen. It sounds like our culprits are having trouble starting Dennis's car. Is the engine missing? No. But this is. What is that? Uh, the coil wire to the distributor. I removed it when Dennis and I were in the garage. The car won't start without it. You knew Peter and Margaret would not be able to get away all along. Mm, but I had to give them a chance to make it their decision. Don't tell escape. This cop's living down all day. 
Some pay for your sins. Uh, sounds like Dennis really sick of us in that zone. This calls for a drink. Right, Julie, but uh, keep away from the windows. Peter still has your gun, and he must be getting angry by now. <laughs> I don't blame him. Margaret is beautiful, but having to spend the night in the garage until the police come is nowhere near as romantic as spending the night by the fire with you. Until the brandy goes. <laughs> did like a detective story with a happy ending. And having faith in the jury system, both here in America and abroad, I am sure both Peter and Margaret will soon be free of the haunting memory of Albion Castle. As for the Druids, there is a great deal to be said for the fascination Stonehenge has for the archaeologists and astronomers of today. The message of the Druids is still with us. I'll be back shortly. you just heard will not cause any embarrassment for the travel agencies in your city. I do hope you will control your urge to rush first thing in the morning and make reservations for a stay at Albion Castle overlooking the magnificence of the ancient temple of Stonehenge. Don't misunderstand. Some say the castle is still there, but the price is rather high. To quote our good friend Siculus Lockbridge, let all who enter these hallowed halls in mockery pay for this transgression with their lives. Our cast included Paul Hecht, Patricia Elliott, Clarice Blackburn, Robert Dryden, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, preview of our next tale. Pleasant dreams... 